Welcome to the webinar on Kiva Zip Loans, hosted by the Pennsylvania Association for Sustainable Agriculture. My name is Jesse Swisher, and I am the Three Rivers Hub Program Coordinator for PASA. I'm joined here tonight with Emily Keebler of Kiva Zip Pittsburgh. Emily Keebler um, works to inform small businesses in the Pittsburgh area about Kiva Zip's 0% interest crowdfunded microloans as the Kiva City Pittsburgh lead. Kiva, the world's first microlending website, empowers small businesses in Pittsburgh and around the world by connecting them to lenders who collectively fund loans and provide a network of support for each business. Before turning the presentation over to Emily, I'd just like to share a few housekeeping items with participants. So first of all, everyone should be by default connected to the webinar through the audio on their computer. If you have trouble with that and would like to switch over in the audio pane of your control panel on the right hand side, you can switch to the telephone option and it will give you a call-in phone number option. Everyone is on mute and will be on mute for the remainder of the program, but they should be able to see all our PowerPoint slides. Um, as we go along, if you have any questions, please type them into the question area of the control panel on your right-hand side. At the end of the presentation, I will then walk through the questions out loud for Emily to respond to. If we don't have enough time in our hour today, we can also work on following up with you by email. And this webinar is being recorded, so at the end of the presentation, we'll be able to share a link with you of the recording, and it will also be posted to the PASA Farming YouTube channel. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Emily. Hi everyone, uh, I, my name is Emily, as Jesse said, I'm with Kiva and I'll be covering a lot uh, of information today, so I hope that I don't move too quickly, um, but it's good to know that we can always uh, respond via email to questions that you have. Uh, so as Jesse said, uh, Kiva is a, a nonprofit organization that uses crowdfunding to help fund microloans in order to create economic opportunity for people all over the world. Uh, we first started doing that in 2005, uh, actually in Uganda, and spread throughout um, developing countries, and we're now in over 80 countries around the world. In 2011, we created a program called Kiva Zip, which operates a little bit differently from our international program, and is available to business owners in the United States. I'm sorry, my slide does not seem to be advancing. We even practice. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, hopefully it'll be go smoothly now. Um, so I mentioned the word crowdfunding, so just to make sure that everybody is um, familiar with that concept. Uh, it's relatively new, the word itself, but the idea isn't. Uh, if you think about things like pledge drives and um, telethons, it essentially is the same thing in that we have a cause that needs a large amount of money, and many individuals that are willing to contribute small amounts in order to help that cause or individual to get there. So we use crowdfunding uh, to help fund loans for small business owners. Um, and our crowdfunding method is actually a loan. So rather than be a donation with um, a reward of some type in return, the recipient of the funds just returns them over a period of time. Um, and we use the term loan recycling uh, to explain why KivaZip and Kiva are so successful. And that's because a lender can go to the website, choose a business owner on the site, 
and make a loan to them as little as $25 each. They then get repaid over time, and with that money back, they're able to repeat the process and help another entrepreneur. So this recycling effect allows one individual to help multiple people and it makes it so that more people can benefit from this crowdfunding. Uh, other benefits of the lending model of crowdfunding, I mentioned the recycling. And because of recycling, we see a lot more people who don't know each other contributing to crowdfunding campaigns. On average, about 80% of the funds that go into a loan are coming from people that the business owner does not know, which is uh, not the case in most types of crowdfunding. Uh, as a business owner who is reaching out to your network and asking them to contribute, it's a lot easier to get them to lend with the promise you'll repay the money than to donate. We have a 90% success rate of businesses reaching their crowdfunding goals, which if you were to compare that to other websites, is much higher. That said, I should um, make sure that everyone knows that the maximum loan size for a key to zip is $10,000. So when we compare excuse me, ourselves to Kickstarter, um, many of those are looking for a lot uh, higher amount of funds. Uh, once the funds are received, we feel that a Keep a Zip loan is a lot easier to uh, repay or reimburse than some of the other sites. For example, uh, they make one, the business letter makes one monthly payment to Kiva, which we then pass on to all of the lenders. We're potentially having to redeem rewards to people at different times or unexpectedly when they show up in the shop to uh, redeem a coupon or something along those lines. Um, it's equal payments across uh, the period of time over which you're repaying, which are known in advance of funding the loan, thus there are no um, surprises. And of course, it's simple. There's no packaging or shipping um, to get products out to people. It's just one quick PayPal payment. Uh, in addition, we um, report to a business credit bureau, so repaying a key visit loan helps someone to build their business credit. So our goal is to improve access to capital. Um, we do that by supporting entrepreneurs who would not qualify for conventional loans. I'll talk more about how we underwrite those loans and are able to help people uh, in a little bit. Um, we leverage new technologies to lower the cost. So as I mentioned, our loans are at 0% interest. Um, and a lot of the reason is because the business owners are doing much of the work. They're taking digital pictures and uploading them. Um, they're using social media to broadcast their crowdfunding campaign out there. And um, we use PayPal to transfer all of our funds. And as a nonprofit organization, we waived all of their fees for us. So collectively, we're able to get the cost of this down to um, nothing at all. And uh, we think that a nice side effect of the program is that we are facilitating connections between the borrowers and lenders who could be all over the world. So I mentioned that we're able to um, give loans to people who might not qualify for a bank loan. So if you're familiar with applying to a bank, uh, they would be looking at your credit scores, asking if you have collateral, cash flows, things like that. So we've moved away from that. Um, we do ask about some of those things, but we do not turn down loans based on any of them. We focus more on char the character of the individual uh, and their relationships and reputation. And we do that two ways. One is through a system of trustees, who are individuals and organizations that vouch for business owners on our website, um, allowing us to get someone's view of their character, and by asking the business owners to bring in the first lenders. And so the thinking there is that the people that you invite, probably your friends, family, and current customers that know you best. If they're willing to lend you $25 or more, we see that as a good sign that you're reliable and you have a support network that believes in what you're doing. I'll talk more about that later. So just so you can get a sense of what our site looks like, uh, it's very simple. If you've looked at other crowdfunding sites, many of them have videos. Ours does not. It's one simple picture. Um, and then there are three written portions that we'll look at closely later. But also so you can see the top of the page here, the um, trustee, who in this case is endorsed by Aaron Aldrich, who is a loan officer at a local community development financial institution. Um, he was working with Verna to open her business and recognized that she needed some more flexible capital than what they could offer. So he endorsed her for a loan, and that's written on that endorsement tab up there. 
Uh, he, uh, she then invited lenders and had others contribute to her campaign. And you can see as much or as little as each individual lender wants to share on the lender tab. And then the final tab there is the conversations one, and other business owners can communicate to their lenders. This is not Verna's campaign. Uh, that's because once the loan fully funds, the conversation tab closes and is not visible to the public. So what do Kiva loans look like? They're for business purposes only. They can be used for educational purposes that are directly tied to the business, such as getting certifications or um, continuing education, but not for something like um, going to business school. They're small, up to $10,000, and I've underlined 10 up to there, because uh, we don't necessarily approve everyone for the amount that they ask. So someone may apply for 10000 and only be approved for five based on various characteristics in their loan. A zero percent interest and no fees. Uh, the repayment is always monthly installments. And uh, they can be repaid in up to 24 months if it's a loan of 5000 or less, and up to 36 for those above 5000 Agriculture businesses are uh, eligible for a grace period. Brand new businesses are on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, with agriculture, the duration of the grace period is also on a case-to-case -case basis that can be up to six months. Um, the time it takes to crowdfund a Kiva Zip loan um, is kind of hard to determine in advance, but the review process takes up to two business days. Uh, private fundraising, which is when business owners inviting their own friends and family to lend can be up to 15 days, and the public crowdfunding up to 45 days. Uh, as mentioned earlier, all the payments are administered via PayPal. And I'd like to just mention that this is posted and crowdfunded online, so it is a very public process, and there is no avoiding that. Um, so our borrowers are using Kiva Zip loans for really just about any use. Uh, those listed on this page are just examples. Uh, but they run the gamut. The only thing that we highly discourage business owners try to crowdfund is repaying old debt. And that's simply because our lenders do not seem to be motivated to contribute to that cause, and we want you to be successful. Uh, our minimum requirements is that a business owner is 18 years old, um, has or able to open a PayPal account, not currently in bankruptcy or foreclosure, has a household income of less than 100000 uh, we can make some exceptions uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, but in general, the thinking there is that if someone has more than that, they probably shouldn't be asking others to contribute to their campaign. Um, we ask that all business owners crowdfunding on the site make a loan to at least one other business owner. Um, this not only gives the um, key visit borrower the experience of making a loan to someone else, and then they know how to teach the people who are lending to them, um, but it also creates a community rather than um, two different categories of lenders and recipients. We, um, it is optional it, to be endorsed by a key visit trustee, uh, but there are various benefits of it. Um, and then finally, bringing in those lenders that I mentioned earlier, the exact number of which could be between 5 and 30, and it's based on a variety of factors, uh, the primary one being the size of the loan but also whether or not um, a business owner has a trustee that's vouching for them. And other things like um, past due debt, um, the industry, as we've seen different repayment rates in different types of industries, um, and the ability to crowdfund on the site. Um, that, so I mentioned these trustees. This is a snapshot of one of our trustees here in Pittsburgh, Lawrenceville Corporation. They're a nonprofit organization that um, supports businesses in their community. They've endorsed two businesses for loans, um, a pottery studio and a corner store. That corner store actually went on to become a trustee themselves. They really enjoyed the Kiva Zip opportunity and wanted to pass it along to others. So they have since um, endorsed two other businesses, uh, Lithic Granola, which they sell their granola in the store, and Brambler Boutique, which the business owner lives across from the market and is a regular customer and was also opening a business nearby. We have over 700 trustees across the country. These are just some examples of the types of, of organizations and individuals that become trustees. Uh, there's no limit to the number of trustees, so we're always bringing on new ones. A trustee can be an individual or, or an organization. 
Um, it is their responsibility to help us find eligible borrowers for a key to zip loan, which um, is based on that business owner's character, business, and social impact. And uh, by social impact, we mean simply will it have a positive impact on that entrepreneur and or their community. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, they publicly endorse them on the Key to Zip website, and they then provide support to them throughout the entire process. So we hope that they will help to promote their loan while they're crowdfunding, and they will also be there as a resource for them as they're repaying. Um, that will never ever mean repaying the loan on the borrower's behalf, but simply giving them advice, referring them to um, small business development centers and whatnot in order to get additional resources so that they can have a successful business and repay the loan. Okay, so let's say you've decided to apply. Um, we're now going to look at the application itself um, and various things you can do to help set yourself up for success. I will then look quickly at the uh, steps and review everything and talk about the timeline. Then I'll share my contact information and that of my colleague in Philadelphia. Um, so when you're completing the application, there are, the majority of the questions are only visible to Kiva. Uh, that's asking for contact and demographic information, some basic business and personal financial information, um, and there is an agreement between the applicant and Kiva. It's um, lengthy, just like any sort of uh, you know thing we agree to these days, downloading new software or whatnot. Um, the main thing that I'd like to point out is that the agreement is between the individual and Kiva not between the business. So if it is an LLC, for example, we do expect the business owner to repay even if the LLC were dissolved and the business were closed. Um, filling out the application, there are certain longer text boxes that will populate the Key to Zip campaign page. Um, this includes a photo of the applicant, which can also include um, team members, partners, um, family, uh, in a setting or with a prop that it communicates what the business is and uh, three written sections, a personal story, a business description, and loan use. So this is just a screenshot of one of the pages of our application. You get a general idea of what it looks like. Um, and I do want to point out that within this particular section, there's one part that hangs people up, um, and that's the very last section there under household debt. It says, if you make any additional monthly payments on debt, please enter them here. I think a lot of people see the monthly payments and uh, include things that are not necessarily debt, such as monthly gas or water bills. So we're looking here for things like student loans, car loans, um, maybe just a commitment to a family member who might use some money. So if you want to just add all of those together and put that amount in there, um, if you were to sc scroll down here, you would see a text box where you could explain what those various debts are. On this particular screen, we don't see any check boxes, but I do like to call people's attention to the fact that some of the very important questions um, that we want to make sure are answered have a check box underneath them, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, such as the photo section, where it wants to make sure that the business owner is in the photo, and many people will upload a picture of their product or their logo. Um, so make sure to look for check boxes throughout. Um, once everything is completed, it populates the page, and eventually that page will show up on a list of loans like this. Um, so I like to point out that our lenders visit the site and see lists like the one you're looking at, and scroll through and choose a loan that interests them, and they can click on it and open up to see the full page. So the picture is really, really the most important part, um, as that's what people's eyes go to first on this page where there's writing. But also, you can spend all your time writing a wonderful personal story, but if no one clicks on your loan on this page, they won't open it up and read that. So it's very important that the picture is eye-catching and communicates your business clearly. The picture should include the business owner, as I mentioned before. It's okay to include other people as well. Anyone who's under 18 and is not the child of the applicant must have a parent sign a waiver. We ask that the business owner's face be visible. Um, so no um, sunglasses, hats that cast shadows over their face, um, or having the back, your back to the camera. Um, and this is mostly because this is what we've found that our lenders like. They want to be able to see the business owner's face, 
and feel a connection to them. Uh, it should show the product, work setting, or tools of the trade in order to try to immediately communicate to people uh, without reading anything what the business is. And should be bright, crisp, and eye-catching. So here are two um, recent examples of businesses that were crowdfunding. Um, the one on the left, I think, is uh, you know, it's nice and bright, um, clearly shows what the product is and in a way that kind of gets your attention too. The one on, I'm sorry, I think I might have said the right, the one on the left <laughs> with the lettuce. Uh, the one on the right there, that individual, I think he's trying to catch people's attention by holding something I believe from Star Wars. Um, but in fact, his product um, are various um, types of wraps with pork in them, which you certainly would not know from the picture there. I also generally would not recommend a black and white photo as it isn't as, doesn't pop out as much as the others. So uh, between these two, I would say the one on the left, it much better represents her and her business. Uh, here's another example of somebody who was crowdfunding recently. Um, and I have to admit, she kind of did a lot of no-nos. Um, so I think sometimes that's the best way to communicate why it's important to avoid those things. Um, so we recommend that photos are landscape or square in order to best, best fit the space. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, white space here that's unused. Um, clear, high-quality photo in a well-lit setting. Um, this one's nice and clear and crisp, but it's not well-lit at all. Uh, we highly recommend that you do not use a selfie. Uh, you can kind of see her outstretched arm in the left uh, left side of the photo here. Um, and it just doesn't come across as professional. Um, and the business owner should look like someone who's living out their dream, that really that photo should inspire people to want to help them uh, run a successful business. So they should be smiling or focused on their work. Um, and make sure to avoid distractions or kind of noise in the background, um, and this is one thing I think she did all right, it's clear what her picture is from the background of it, um, but we often see photos uh, where someone's in a public place and there's a sign in the background that doesn't relate to their business or a glaring red exit sign um, or reflections, you can see the person taking the picture, all those kind of things distract from the business owner themselves. So you want to really make sure to have a great photo because that's what's going to pull people in and send that message that you are um, are a professional and you're going to work hard to repay their loan. So here are a couple of examples of good photos. This one, to be honest, I think could be a little bit brighter, but what I really like about it is that her product is literally front and center. She's got a great big smile on her face and the background is plain and is not distracting. She also looks very clean and professional uh, wearing her outfit there. This is another one where um, the, these individuals were selling at markets in the Pittsburgh area, so they didn't have a storefront. Um, they were using another business's commercial kitchen um, and didn't want to take a photo in there. Um, so, you know, they grabbed their, photo, their product and stood in front of a simple wall, um, and that communicated what the business was. Here's um, another great example. She's got, you know, it's well lit, nice big smile, very obvious what the business is about because she's showing one of the tools of her trade. Uh, and this is an individual here in Pittsburgh who was actually using our, uh, the loan to purchase land. So we didn't have a farm or equipment to show off yet. Um, but he captured uh, Pittsburgh in the background, which is going to appeal to a certain demographic of, of people who want to lend local. And yet it still also has uh, the natural setting there. So now moving on to the written sections, um, we encourage people to keep them short but meaningful, have two to three paragraphs per section, um, and each paragraph should appear as no more than six lines of text on the screen, preferably even less than that. We want the, um, people to be able to look at this and kind of skim quickly and immediately get um, the idea of what the business is about. It is okay to have one sentence paragraphs. Um, they can be great for emphasis. So this is a screenshot of somebody who was crowdfunding recently. We can see his personal story and business description, but it's so lengthy that we can't see the uh, loan use at the bottom. Just to give you a sense, this paragraph at the top is 10 lines long. Um, if you're like me, you look at that and your eyes kind of get lost in the middle of it. The one right below it is six lines, and that's a little bit more reasonable. But shorter than that might be even better. Just in general, 
I would say this is too long. And that can be really hard because people are passionate about their business and they want to communicate their story and describe their business. Um, but our lenders have many loans that they could look at on the website. So they might have reached yours after already passing over three others and they might not have time to read the whole thing. So we don't want them to be overwhelmed and move on to the next one. So the sections I mentioned are the personal story. This is where you really want to appeal to people's hearts. Um, make them care about you and your dream and really want to help you. Um, so one way to do that is to talk about what motivated you to start this business. Maybe it's um, as simple as supporting your family, or maybe you're passionate about bringing your product to people. You've seen the joy on their face. So what is it that motivates you? And maybe give a little history on how you got to this point. Uh, we always want people to write in first person. That makes the reader really feel a connection and more inclined to help. This isn't a resume. This is a gamma connection. That's kind of the key word here. The next section is the business description. And here you want to appeal to people's minds. Show them the money. Uh, how are you bringing it in? How long have you been doing it? What are your plans for your, the future? Do you have any employees? Many of our lenders really like to see a, a large economic impact. So their money is not just helping you, but helping you to help others as well. And finally, the loan use. Um, here you want to summarize the impact that this loan will have on your business, and then include a specific expense list. If you have a whole lot of expenses, I would break them into categories. And with each of those, either categories or individual items, give a nice round number, I'd probably say to the nearest $100 of what that will cost you. The loan review process, um, first um, we are looking to make sure that the applicant has already made a loan to another business on the site. So if you've already done that, um, that will speed up your loan review. Uh, the first uh, step is having someone at our headquarters look through the loan. I like to make people aware of the fact that our headquarters is in California, so there is a time difference. Uh, they will probably make phone calls between 12 p.m. and call as late as 8 p.m. our time, and they will be calling with long distance numbers. Uh, the reviewer will let the business owner know how much they've been approved for up to the $10,000, or you know, assuming that that's, they asked for $5,000, of course, not over and above the five. Um, and unless the business owner requests otherwise, the reviewer will post the loan immediately after um, the phone call. However, the business owner can request another day. So it may be that they call you on Thursday and you know you're about to go away for a long weekend and you would lose time. Um, so you can request to have the loan posted on Monday. Whenever it's posted, they'll send an email with your link and you'll know it's time to get started. Uh, so getting started means entering what we call the private fundraising period. Um, and this is part of our underwriting system that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you have 15 days as soon as that clock starts to get 5 to 30 lenders. And you'll be, at that point, aware of the number of lenders that you're seeking. We have a fundraising hub, which helps people, particularly with this private fundraising period. Um, so we have on there a calendar. We have some tips on setting um, a good, having a good photo for those who haven't had an opportunity to attend something like this. Uh, and also on there, we have uh, templates. Kiva can be a difficult thing to explain to people who are not already familiar with it. So we offer templates for emails, Facebook posts, even um, bullet points of things to cover in a phone call to make it easier for people. Of course, um, I also recommend that you did take that email and then kind of change it to be your voice as well. Okay, so strategy for the private fundraising period. Um, is always get through it as quickly as possible. You have up to 15 days to complete it, but as soon as you complete it, you move on to the public fundraising period. Some people are in a hurry to get their loan as soon as possible, so that will help speed that up. But also, we have a couple of sorts that lenders can use when they're selecting loans on our site. So you want to use the private fundraising period strategically in order to fall at the top of those sorts and be seen by the most lenders. You can see on the right-hand side um, one of the sort options. People can also sort by location and industry, but you can't change those things. But you can impact where you fall on popular overall, 
as well as newest, which I'll explain in a moment. So popular overall um, means the average number of dollars per day over the entire time you've been fundraising. This includes the private fundraising period. So that's why it's important to get through the private fundraising period as quickly as possible so that the dollars per day is as high as possible. Just an example to explain that a little bit better. Um, if you are required to have 16 people lend to you and you get 16 people to give you $25 each, that's $400. If those 16 people all come through on your very first day, um, then we would divide that $400 by one and come up with your popular overall score being $400. However, if it takes 10 days for those 16 people to come through with their money, your um, dollars per day is only $40. So on that popular overall score, you'll be much further down uh, the page or potentially even on the second page um, if you debut having gone through the private fundraising period and having $40 per day versus $400. And another example, if you get 15 friends to give you $25 and you have a rich aunt who gives you $200, uh, the total you've brought in during private fundraising is $575. However, if it takes you the full 15-day period to bring that in, your average amount per day is $38.33. So you are, of course, a little bit further towards your goal, which is great. Um, however, you're going to be even further down on the popular overall sort than somebody who has only had people contributing $25 but brought them in faster. Um, because of this, it's important to prepare your potential lenders in advance um, and let them know the significance of giving quickly. So what I suggest is when you get a phone call from a reviewer and they let you know how many people you'll need to bring in, you set a date with them that is at least a couple of days in advance um, and start preparing your network. Uh, I recently saw somebody who created a Facebook event and in that event explained what Kiva was and what her goal was um, and what she'd be using the loan for and then invited friends and family to that, got them excited about it. And then a couple of days later, when the loan was posted and she had her link to her loan, she could uh, post it in there, updating all of the people who um, had been invited to the Facebook event, and then hopefully having them come through for her quickly. Another one of the source um, is newest. And this is the total number of days on the site, including days in the private fundraising period. For that reason, people can debut on the site far down this sort, um, even though it's their first day publicly crowdfunding, they might have been privately crowdfunding for some time. It's a little bit hard to see here, but this is a screenshot of loans that are crowdfunding currently, uh, sorted by newest, and you can see that the one at the top, which should be the newest one, has been crowdfunding for 44 days, the one below it for 40, and the one below it for 43 days. And these numbers are a countdown from 45. So they should be going uh, in order from largest number of days remaining to smallest, but the loan that has 43 days left is below that that has 40 days left, um, most likely because she spent a longer period of time in the private fundraising period. One of the other popular sorts um, that we see lenders choosing is expiration. Uh, they want to help uh, borrowers who are in danger of expiring, as our loans are all or nothing. So if a business owner does not reach their goal, um, they don't receive any of the money that has been pledged to them. Um, so many of our lenders, uh, they're doing this because they want to help people, and so they want to help folks avoid that situation. And uh, a lot of people do sort by expiration, and a lot of loans come in at the end. But of course, you don't want the stress of worrying that you could expire. Um, so hopefully, you'll never get to that point. So what are the steps? Um, we've talked through them all, but just to make them nice and clear here, um, before you start an application, um, you want to think about whether or not you would like to have a trustee endorse your loan. If you already have a relationship with an existing trustee, that's pretty simple. Uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend going ahead with that. If you don't, but you'd like to have one, you might uh, want to look at who is already a trustee in your area and reach out to them if it, it seems like someone maybe you wanted to build a relationship with already and uh, 
talk to them about your business and your plans, get to know them a little bit, and see if they're willing to endorse you. We can also onboard new trustees. So sometimes a business owner actually knows some of our trustees but hasn't been working with them um, uh, regarding their business, but they have been working with a score mentor or a cousin who's a more experienced business owner that's been advising them through the process, and they want them to be their trustee. We can certainly onboard new trustees. They just create the profile that we look, looked at earlier um, and then can make the endorsement. Uh, we do have some concerns around conflicts of interest, so people cannot live in the same household as their trustee, they cannot be immediate family members, and trustees cannot financially benefit from the endorsement. Um, and of course, people can decide to proceed without a trustee as well. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, you should make a loan to another business on the site, and of course, decide how to use the loan. Make sure all of that's figured out and you're comfortable with the amount that you would be repaying, particularly on a monthly basis. So now that you've kind of got all those ducks in a row, you want to start the application. Um, so enter all of the items that we talked about earlier, private information, the various public sections, written sections, a picture, and sign the agreement. Um, you know, I didn't include this, but I should mention that if you do not already have a PayPal account, that would also be something to set up prior to getting started, as that will be requested in the application. Uh, if you have a trustee, now is the time for them to endorse you before entering review, as the reviewer will take into consideration um, whether or not you have a trustee, and if you do, the trustee's experience with our system. As a trustee that has endorsed many businesses that are repaying is looked upon better than someone who's new to the system and doesn't have a track record. Um, the pers local person in your area, which would be me for Pittsburgh or kind of the western half of the state and Harrisburg um, or my colleague in Philadelphia, uh, will probably reach out to you and get in touch um, with suggestions on how to make your application even stronger. Um, and once everything looks we'll let the folks at headquarters know, and they'll then calculate the amount of money that you're eligible to crowdfund and that private fundraising requirement. Uh, they'll then give you a phone call, as I mentioned, potentially as late as 8 p.m., um, to have the conversation prior to posting and talk about the posting date. Next begins the private fundraising period, which can take up to 15 days, but ends as soon as the goal is reached. So if one's goal is uh, 12 lenders, upon hitting 12, move, immediately moves into the public fundraising period, and that can take up to 45 days. Upon hitting the goal, the business owner, uh, the loan shuts down, um, so the business owner cannot bring any funds in over and above the amount that they've requested. Um, and typically the loan is dispersed to the business owner's PayPal account within five business days. So how can you get involved? If you are interested in borrowing, um, one way would be to reach out to a trustee. You can visit zip.kiva.org slash trustees um, to see a list of trustees across the country and sort by Pennsylvania for ones in your area. Uh, you can contact myself, Emily Keebler, and there's my email address and phone number, or my colleague, Alyssa Thomas. She's actually hosted um, with the Department of Commerce in Philadelphia. Um, that's her uh, government email um, and her phone number. You can go online and begin an application at any time without reaching out to anyone. Um, if you are in one of our areas, we'll see that your application uh, has been started and reach out to you. Um, if you would like to just stay in touch, maybe you're not ready to apply for a loan right now, uh, or you're even on the call because you're a potential trustee or lender, and you just want to kind of know what we're up to, um, you can subscribe. We both have e-newsletters. Um, our, mine is uh, the, the strange string of letters there, um, but that's uh, a MailChimp shortened. You can also send me an email, address, email and I can just add you to the list. Um, the Department of Commerce has an e-newsletter. Some, but not all, of what they cover is related to KivaZip. Um, and KivaZip has, itself has a Twitter 
Uh, we have one here in Pittsburgh, and in Philadelphia, they use the Department of Commerce's Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to make a loan to somebody else, you can go to zip.kiva.org slash loan um, and scroll through. I highly recommend this if you're considering borrowing as well, just to see who else is on the website and get a sense of what their applications look like, or well, I guess this public section. Um, and you can use the location sort to find one in our area. And if you're interested in seeing not only those that are currently fundraising, but maybe those that are repaying ended, which for us means they finished repaying the loan, or expired, meaning that they did not reach their goal, um, you can select those in the sort option. OK, so that was a lot of talking quickly. I was concerned I wasn't going to cover it all in time. Um, I hope it's been helpful for people. And um, I'll turn it over to Jessie so she can let me know if there have been any questions. Thanks, Emily. And um, we don't have any questions yet, so just a reminder to folks that if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them into the question panel on the right-hand side of your control panel. And while we wait for um, presentation questions to come through, I'll just ask, so Emily, you mentioned looking on the website to select a trustee. What would be the best way you would suggest going about building your relationship with that trustee? Um, if it's a nonprofit organization, uh, especially one that is focused on helping small businesses, um, I'm sure you can find a website on um, that they link, we link them from the trustee profile and then from there a phone number or email address and give them a call to see what services they offer for small businesses, um, as well as what their requirements are as trustees. Some trustees um, will have uh, those listed on their profile page. So on the profile, there are two tabs uh, with questions that each trustee has answered. One of them is, um, what sort of due diligence will you be um, using in order to select business owners. And in many cases there, they'll say something like, um, you know, our focus is on helping businesses in Lawrenceville, like Lawrenceville Corporation uh, that I mentioned earlier. So we will be endorsing businesses that are located in Lawrenceville or the business owner lives in Lawrenceville. And we will sit down and have an initial meeting prior to making a decision. Or they may be more specific and say something like, we would uh, expect to see the business plan or have a relationship that goes back at least six months prior to making an endorsement. So sometimes just looking at the profile is useful and you can figure out who might be a good fit for you. Great. Thanks, Emily. And we did have a few other questions come in in the meantime. So Mary Ann asks, what is a good term length to have a strong application? Um, hmm. We do look at the business owner's debt to income ratio and um, keep that in mind along with the additional monthly payments that they would be taking on with Kiva. And of course, don't want to see that get so high that it would be uncomfortable or difficult for anyone to repay. Um, so I would say that the term is not something that we look at closely. However, the term does impact um, what the monthly payment will be. So if you're someone that already has a little bit of a um, debt load on a, you know, as reflected in your monthly payment, I would say that a longer term would be better since that would give you a smaller monthly payment. Uh, I mentioned that loans above $5,000, so $5,000 in 2025. 20, and up can have a repayment of 36 months. So sometimes if someone um, themselves is worried about having too much debt on a monthly basis or thinks that our reviewer might be concerned about that, um, they can borrow a little bit more, say borrow $5,100 and spread that out over a 36-month repayment and actually have a lower monthly payment than they would if they just borrowed $5,000 and uh, spread that out over 24 months, which is the maximum for loans of 5000 or less. Um, I don't believe that many of our lenders 
are looking at the loan term in order to decide um, whether or not to lend to a business owner, but it is possible that some could be. And in their, that case, they may like to see a shorter loan term so that they know they get their money back faster. But I really, I've never heard of that expressed by a lender. Great, thanks. And Kathy asks, what happens to the money people lend if the application expires? That's a good question. Um, so the, their credit card or PayPal account ha does get charged at the point that they make the uh, contribution, not upon the loan fully funding. So they have already been charged for the transaction. The money then would return to their Kiva account. They could keep it in their Kiva account. Um, perhaps they contribute it in order to help out a friend or a business, and that person may try again. Um, as someone expiring does not mean they can't um, attempt to get another loan, though we would probably want to see some changes to their application to increase the chance that it will be successful the second time. But so that individual may want to leave the money in their account in order to easily contribute to their friend's campaign again. Otherwise, they can withdraw it. However, at this point, um, with those who are within the first 15 days there can actually just have a refund. It's a little bit easier because that can be more of an ex like kind of a return on a credit card. But if the loan has taken the full 60 days, um, they might, that might not work, so they probably will have to um, withdraw the money via PayPal. So they would have to have a PayPal account at that time. Okay, thanks. And question from Steve. He asks, is there a limit to how many loans you can obtain or qualify for? Uh, a business owner can only have one loan out at a time. Um, I'm not sure if, if the question is at one time or overall, but once they repay that first loan, they can even come back for a second loan. And the second time around tends to be a lot easier. You know, if someone is concerned about bringing in their network of lenders, um, we suggest that they start with a small loan when they won't have to get too many people to lend to them during that private fundraising period, and then repay that quickly and come back for a second loan. Um, we'll then have built our confidence in them. We won't have to get as many lenders as they would have otherwise for that amount. Um, in addition, they can ask all those who lent to them the first time to lend to them again. Um, and we, so we, we love seeing repeat lenders building that relationship since our system is all about relationships. Um, but if the question is more about how many loans can the business owner have out at one time, then they can only have one loan. If the business is owned by like a, you know, a partnership of two people, you can still only have one loan per business, um, not one per business owner. Um, there are some situations uh, with cooperatives where we can uh, work with more than one business owner at the same time. It gets a little complicated there, but <laughs> there are some possibilities. OK, thanks. Another question from Kathy. She asks if the Farmers Veteran Coalition has been a trustee for any loans because she knows that they have been promoting Kiva Zip. You know, we haven't had, um, I haven't worked with them in the Pittsburgh area. Um, so without uh, having you guys watch me um, uh, check the website, I can't tell you offhand if they are a trustee or not by visiting um, our trustee page, and there's a search section, you could pretty easily search for their name. Um, I could certainly find out the answer to that and follow up, um, to if I could send Jackie the information, she could pass along, or she could send Kathy's information. But I, yeah, I do know that they've been very um, supportive recently, and if they're not a trustee, um, then they're definitely a strong partner. Great, yeah, and we can work on following up with Kathy on that. So final question I have from Steve, can the loans be used to purchase open land for agricultural use? Yes. Okay, that's a yes, great. Um, I should uh, maybe add on there too, since 
it's unlikely that 10,000 would cover um, a very large amount of land. So in the case of the Pittsburgh urban um, farm that I showed earlier, he was purchasing um, from the city and was able to cover the cost of that 10,000. But if somebody were getting um, a loan from another type of financial institution, we're happy to be a part of that. So maybe they get a larger loan from another organization and we're just a small part of it. Um, I did say early on that our mission is to, to help those who wouldn't qualify for conventional loans, but sometimes there are specific costs and requirements of a conventional lender um, that can't be met without the flexible type of funding that we offer. So we're happy to do that, you know, down payment, or we had someone who actually purchased a small warehouse. Um, and he did receive a mortgage for that, but he wasn't able to get any additional debt to um, make repairs to it that needed to be made. And so we were willing to fund that um, additional cost for him. So we're happy to be kind of a, a part of a financing package. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Emily. If anyone has any final questions, we have just a few minutes. Go ahead and submit your question um, by typing it in. And Emily, did you have any closing comments for the webinar? Um, I don't think so. Uh, hopefully you've all had my contact information on the screen long enough that you've been able to grab that. I'm happy to answer any questions um, after this that may come to mind. Okay, so we have one more question from Mary Ann, and she asks, what is the maximum term length? Uh, 36 months, but that's the maximum for loans that are $5,025 or more. Um, loans that are $5,000 or less, the maximum is 24 months. And uh, I mentioned we do allow grace periods for agriculture businesses, so you know that number of months, of course, begins after the grace period. Thanks, Emily. And that concludes our questions for today. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up for the evening. Thanks for coming out, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks, Emily, for your presentation. Also, just want to let folks know that we will be emailing out a survey along with a recording of the presentation within a few days. And as I mentioned, this presentation will also be available on the PASA Farming YouTube channel. So I hope everyone has a great night. Thanks. Good night. Thank you, Jesse.